I was about five years old, my Uncle Mel gave me a toy marching drum. And uh, they put the thing around my neck and handed me the sticks and, you know, they went on to talk and I started playing and for some reason I knew what to do. And I played some kind of marching drum cadence that I heard on television and, and all, my family goes, <laughs> you know, when did you learn to do that, you know? My dad eventually bought me a really nice uh, uh, Ludwig snare drum that I actually still have. And I actually started playing professionally at age 10 with my dad's band. He was like, okay, you're ready. Let's, you're in the band, you know, rehearsal after school. Really? Okay. You know, I was learning violin pretty young. That's another instrument I learned young. It kind of moved me into guitar and bass. My aunt Maggie, you know, she taught me basic things about the piano. I would recommend most drummers, to most drummers, to learn harmonic and melodic instruments because I think it, it makes you a better listener as a band member more sensitive to what's happening musically. And I would say that was one of the big benefits for me. My first introduction to electronic drums would have been in the late 1970s with a little device called the Syndrome. And I'm, I'm actually starting to hear Syndromes on pop records right now. And if it's not a Syndrome, it's a sample of one. It goes, boom, 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 boom. You know, it's like kind of weird but sometimes cute in the right context, right? So I got one of these devices and set it up next to my acoustic kit. And when I would have the disco gig, I could reach over and give them that sound that they wanted to hear on the gig. But uh, fast forward a little bit, you know, I started coming on the session scene in New York City. Right at the moment, the Lindrum was starting to put a lot of drummers out of work. I was young, I was open-minded, and I understood that if I wanted to make it and I wanted to be competitive in New York City at that time, that I was going to have to make electronics a part of my professional arsenal. I went right to Manny's music in New York City, got myself a, v, uh, a Lindrum, learned how to program that thing and added that to my business card promptly. And so it started with that investment. Fast forward a little more, you know, in the 90s, Roland started to really develop some super cool instruments for drummers to play. Uh, I experimented early on with the TD-7 and the TD-5. Uh, I even took one of those devices in the studio in a Michael Jackson session uh, for history. What we did was we connected it to a sampler that had samples of him hitting different parts of his body. And I ended up doing a drum set of him, basically. And then a few years later, I was looking through a Roland Users Group magazine, and I saw an article about a device called the V-Drums, and I flipped out. When I read the article, and I saw the screenshots of the software in the article, I knew that this device was gonna revolutionize electronic drumming forever. When I first got the V-Drums, it was everything I thought it would be and more. It gave me so much confidence that I decided to take the drum set on the road with a major artist that I was working with at the time. At that time, I was playing with Madonna. I had been in her band for about eight years. She had just put out a, a record called Ray of Light. The producer, William Orbit, sent me some of the samples, the intention being to load them in the sampler du jour and trigger them or whatever. When I listened to the record, I realized I could accomplish this with the TD-10. All I needed to do was make notes to myself of, of what the sounds were on the various records. And then I, I began looking in the brain, going through the kicks and the snares, and identifying the ones that were closest to what I was hearing on the record. I was able to then tweak them right into sounding just like the record with no problem, everything in the brain. And I showed up at rehearsal with the Ray of Light kit, and it was awesome. Some of my current music projects uh, have been my jazz trio project called The Trio of Oz, and the O of Oz being me, and the Z is my wife Rachel Z, a pianist and keyboard player. I'm also on the most recent Daft 
punk album that's uh, just been released. I toured with a Miles Davis tribute band called Miles Smiles. And a uh, really amazing project. The only way to get in this project though is that you actually had to play with Miles. I was fortunate enough to work on three albums with Miles, Tutu, A Mandala, and uh, the music from Siesta. Another project with uh, country music, Dobro, slide guitar legend, Jerry Douglas. You know, just still on the session scene. You know, I'm still doing that. Yeah. Felt busy as usual. You know, what's really interesting about taking V-drums in the studio is that the moment people see the power, they want one right away. I gotta have this. Especially people that don't have a live room to record drums in. You know, that's a big deal. Everybody has project studios these days. You know, you can record records on a laptop right now. A lot of my friends do this, you know, so it's like, hey, bring the kit by, you know. But a lot of them end up getting a V-Drums kit eventually. Another thing that I like to do in the studio is that I like to do all of the tweaking in the brain. The reason I do that is, is if they end up calling me for a gig, I don't have to do any more work. I already did the work on the original session. The EQ, the compression, any uh, effects. There's uh, miking options for miking placement. So not only do you have an electronic drums device, but you have a virtual studio, a virtual mic closet, rooms that you can actually choose from. It's insane the power that actually lives in this little box. Roland has come a long way uh, since the TD-10. And this latest iteration, the TD-30, is really incredible. I recently got my TD-30 kit, and my first job with the TD-30 was a very interesting uh, event for ASCAP. Uh, called We Write the Songs, where they celebrate very famous American composers and songwriters. You know, this year uh, we had Elvin Bishop and we had Saida Garrett, who wrote Man in the Mirror for Michael Jackson. But what was interesting about this show was the styles. You know, one song, I'm playing a brush kit. Another song, I have to program these drum machine sounds for Saida. And then Elvin Bishop wanted to crank up and play Fooled Around and Fell in Love. The playing part is not a problem for me because I've been playing for so long. But when I can bring this level of sonic accuracy to the artist, and they're not expecting it, and it sounds just like their record, it's, it's a joy to see their faces. And it was a huge success. Everybody was super happy. And I think uh, some more V-drums were sold that day. <laughs> I've been saying for years that there's gonna be a moment where there's just gonna be an E-drummer. Before this moment, there wasn't an instrument that a drummer could actually say, you know what, I can actually make this my ax. In the same way that there are famous electric guitarists, we know them as electric guitarists. They don't play acoustic guitar. They play electric guitar, electric bass. That's what they do. I think that we are getting very close to that moment with drums. I have used the V-drums actively for the last 16 years. It's a really cool way to experience the future of drumming.